Hello and welcome to the Ovani Sound Plugin Tutorial. I'll show you how to install the plugin, how to make something with it, and uh, just an example of using it. Alright, so I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to make a new project, and this is in Godot 4.1.1. This is the latest version as of recording, and the uh, plugin works well with this. It might work with previous versions of Godot, but I can't guarantee it. Alright, and it should be forward compatible. I'm going to press New Project, I'm going to name it something. we just choose a path. Looks good, alright, and I'll create the new project. Alright, here's the new project. There's nothing in it at all, and I'll show you how to get started with the plugin. First off, you need to have a copy of it. It's going to be a zip file usually. You'll extract this zip file. And then you can drag and drop the extracted folder directly into Godot. And there you go, you have the plugin now. Now, you'll also need some music to use with the plugin. This plugin is specifically built for this configuration five music files, one that's 30 seconds long, 60 seconds long, and then three alternate tracks that are the same length that alternate in uh, intensity. Basically, one will be low intensity, two will be medium, and main will be high. Additionally, it supports quote-unquote reverb tails. It's specifically for our kind of music, but you can make your own music with this feature. Basically, the song will play over itself at its end for this amount of time. Anyhow, since I've got the music pack from the website, I can drag and drop it into Godot also, and then wait a very long time. Alright, the music's finally imported into Godot, and now we can actually work on the plugin. So this plugin has two parts, quote unquote song resources, or Ovani songs, and then the actual Ovani player. The player will take in songs, it'll play them, and it'll discard them once they're done. Or it'll loop them, or it'll transition through them, just a bunch of stuff. I'm going to create a scene real quick to demonstrate the Ovani player, so let me just do that. Once you've got your scene set up, you can just right click on any parent node, press add child node, and then you can just search Ovani, and the Ovani player should pop right up with its custom icon. You can double click on it, and now you've got it in your scene. Now the Ovani player is not positional, it'll only play in 2D, which is usually what you'll want for background music and all that. What it, how it works is it's got a queue of songs to play through one by one and you can add songs by drag and dropping them right in. Or you can add them using a few functions in code, which I'll go over later. Alright, I'll go over to my music pack. I'll find what I want to use. I, I like action too, that one's fun. And you cannot just drag and drop it right over, because these need to be put in an Ovani song resource. You can do this by right clicking, pressing create new resource, and just type Ovani. There we go. I want to also uh, specify a name for this resource file. I'm going to name it Action2 since that's the song it'll hold. Cool. should be able to just click on it or double click if that doesn't work and you'll be editing the resource file. And here you can drag and drop in your sounds. You'll see the names of each property and you should just be able to match that right up. Then you'll also need to specify a reverb tail. This, with our packs, is going to be in the name of the folder, so for Action 2 it, uh, it's 4.5 seconds. And again, this is how long the song loops over itself to make loops seamless. Now that we've got this resource configured and it's all set up, we can go back to our Avani player and just drag and drop it right in. Alright. Now, you could play the game by pressing play in order to hear it play, or you could just click on play in editor. This toggle will make it so you can hear the music, it'll run through it, it'll give you a little progress bar and all that. And problem is, uh, this is a queue. This will run through all of your songs. If you have multiple songs queued up, it will remove the first one from the queue once it's done playing. Just a quick little disclaimer. Anyhow, I'll play an editor. And here we see it's playing the three different music tracks, but we only hear one, zero intensity. I can turn that intensity up. Now we're at 50%. Uh, or, no, at 48. One second. Now we're at 50% intensity, so you'll be hearing track number two. 
And if I fade this up to 100%, which has drums, anyhow, you'll be hearing number three a lot more. Just fade this right back down. We've also got the volume in decibels, so you could turn this up and blast your ears out, or you could turn it all the way down if you don't want to hear it. Don't know why you just want a muted player, but that's that. And you can click off of uh, Play and Editor. Now another feature is if we've got multiple songs, I've already talked about this, but it will cue through all of them. I'm going to create another song resource to put in here for, uh, how about, let's do fight, fight number two. I'm going to create another song resource for fight number two and put it in here and show off the queuing system. Alright, I've got fight two set up as a resource. I can just press add element on this array and drop it in. Once action 2 is over, it will transition over to fight 2. It will also remove this from the array, so if you're previewing an editor, watch out. Now, I'm going to also click on song mode down here. This setting, which is part of the resource, will specify whether it's playing these three tracks up here, or this one, or this one. I'll set it to loop 30 so that uh, action 2 is only 30 seconds and I don't have to wait a whole minute and then you'll see the transition after that. Hopefully that jump is desirable to you since it will, uh, you'll get the reverb of the last song, the reverb tail playing a bit and it will be a more interesting transition than just cutting. Though you also noticed that, of course I've talked about this three times now, it will remove the first item from the queue once it gets there. And I can just add this right back by drag and dropping it. Or you can use quick load if you're uh, fancy. Here it is. Alright, let's get into the scripting side of this. There are a ton of easy to use functions for this. You can transition between different intensities and volumes with uh, fade settings. You're going to fade in and out of songs, fade between songs, all of that via scripting. Uh, side note, if you're using C Sharp, you're going to have to use Godot's call, set, and get functions instead of just like uh, using get node, Ovani player, because uh, Godot does not generate C Sharp bindings for GD script objects. Alright, just for fun, I've set up the scene to be a little bit more interesting, and I've added in a camera. I'm going to uh, do all the scripting on this guy, just because what else am I going to do? Um, I'll make a new Godot script. I'm going to make it built in, because I don't want to make a file. And now here is our editing slash scripter slash thing. The first stop, I'd like to make an example of all the different fade functions. Uh, how about we'll fade from zero intensity to 100% when I press J on my keyboard. To do this, we'll need to get some input processing going. And we need an actual reference to our Avani player object slash node first. We'll set up a variable. Have it so it's of Ovani player type. And now I'm going to uh, put export on it so that we can access it using the editor. And there it is. Yeah, it's on my camera 3D where the script is. Just drag and drop it in. And cool, I can now access it using my script. Then the fading logic is really simple. All we got to do is uh, go to our player and then go to fade intensity. I'm going to fade it from 0 to 100% and then I'd like it to take five whole seconds to do that. I'll save the script and scene, I'll press play. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm going to press J now. And I believe that should have been about five seconds. It's all faded in, and we've got a bunch more instruments. This works reverse, too. You can make it fade to zero, just any number between zero and one. Now, the same thing is going to go for volume, which I'll just I'll just demonstrate that right now. It'll, it'll fade to zero. Uh, you know, 0.25 volume. Oh, shoot, this is in decibels. I forgot. A negative 80. It'll just die with the fade volume function. And it is gone. Next up, I'd like to show off the uh, switching between different songs. It will transition from song A to song B while it's playing. And we can use this via the play song now function. We need to input a song and then how long it'll transition for. Now, I'd like to transition over to another song, a new one, Relaxed, which I'll just set that up right now as a resource. And now in order to access this resource in code, all we got to do is type in another var, name it uh, re the name of the song, so this will be Relaxed. Make it inherit from Avani's song this time, because this is a song resource. And we'll make it equal, load, and then we can just search for it basically by using quotation marks. Either that, or you can just go to your file, right click and press copy path, and then just paste it in. We'll have this as the input for the song parameter, and then we'll set uh, transition time to uh, about, okay, I'm boring, I'll do five seconds again. Now when I start it, it will start with the uh, fight music and I'm going to press J to make it fade over. Okay. Now, if you'd like it to cut immediately, you can just put in zero, but that's kind of boring. Or you can have it fade uh, with an automatic time by just leaving it empty. Next up is the Q next function. This well, Q song function. This will make a song play after the current one. And you've already seen this happen in real time when I demoed out the Avani player. Uh, I'm not going to show off this function. It's very simple. It's basically just adding a song to the end of the current array. And of course, you can set all of the values directly. If you wanted to drive the intensity with something specific, like maybe you've got some kind of action scene, and depending on how well the player is doing, the music will be more intense. You can just drive the intensity directly by setting the variable to something. Maybe you could calculate it off of uh, the player ETC. Of course, you can also set the volume directly. With that, you should be able to set up any kind of scripted interaction. It's open-ended. But if you want some more uh, direct info on this, all you got to do is click on your Ovani player node, press docs, and then click on Ovani player either right here, or you can press search help and type in Ovani. And of course, you can set all of the values directly. If you wanted to drive the intensity with something specific, like maybe you've got some kind of action scene, and depending on how well the player's doing, the music will be more intense. You can just drive the intensity directly by setting the variable to something. Maybe you could calculate it off of uh, the player ETC. Of course, you can also set the volume directly. With that, you should be able to set up any kind of scripted interaction. It's open-ended. But if you want some more uh, direct info on this, all you got to do is click on your Ovani player node, press docs, and then click on Ovani player either right here, or you can press search help and type in Ovani. Okay. That should cover it. We hope this saves you a lot of time, and good luck with your future projects.